you have logged into RStudio and you will see a screen that looks like this. However, under your projects, everything will be blank. There'll be nothing there. The first thing you want to do is start a new project. Click on the upside down triangle and choose new project. Your new project will appear. Be warned that deploying and opening projects are very slow occasionally in RStudio. It's one of the most frequent complaints people have. And welcome to RStudio. On the left, you have some things that you will probably never have to work with. Over on this part, the main part of the software, you'll have three to four panes open at any time. One thing, make sure you always use the same project during the entire semester. You can give it a name if you want to, but only use one project during the semester. This part of the software is called the console. If you're working inside the console, it's an immediate feedback sort of thing. It's kind of like using a browser. You type in something and you hit enter and you get something back right away. Later on, I'm going to be teaching you how to use R Markdown, which is a little bit more like a printing press, where you type in commands, and then you have to process it, and then you get to see what your document looks like. In this pane, you can look at environment, history, connections, tutorials. The main thing that you're going to take out of this pane is just to see if your data has been loaded. The other pane that's going to be very important is down here, where you have files. This is where you'll upload the files that you need. Your plots will appear here when you do them. Help appears here, and you also have a viewer. The main things I think you'll probably be using will be files, plots, and help. Well, let's go see a little bit about what the console can do. Let's see some things that we can do in the console. There are many data sets already built into RStudio, and there are other data sets that we will load in. If you ever want to see a list of the data sets that are currently loaded in your environment, next to this arrow here is where you will start typing commands and things will appear. Most of the time, the commands inside of RStudio are some words with something inside of parentheses. The thing inside of the parentheses is the object that it gets operated on. You don't have to worry too much about that, just a little bit of understanding of what the syntax is. So we'll type data like that, hit enter, and above that another pane will open up and you get to see a list of all the data sets that are currently loaded. Mine will have more than yours because I have more packages. So first of all it says data sets in package data sets. So we have something about air passengers, sales data, carbon dioxide uptake, and as you scroll down the window, or you can come scroll over here, you'll continue to see the list of these data sets. So data with open and close parentheses down here in the console will get you a list of all the data sets that you can look at right now. We're going to look at this chick weight data set. So we can't do anything by clicking on that, because that's simply a list. We can do something by typing a command in the console. We can actually just type the name of the data set, and you see that as you type, our studio most of the time, not always, but most of the time will want to autocomplete for you and let you choose what's there. We want this one, and we'll do that, and if you hit enter with that, you've, it says it reached max, but what it started to do, and I can scroll back up to see it, is give a list to me of every single data point that's in that data set. If I scroll back up to where I typed it in, it gave me the columns, the rows here, and the column headers, which actually have names. So we have weight, time, chick, and diet. And I think you can agree this is kind of an ugly way to try to get a handle on what's in that data set. A better way to do it is to type view with a capital V, parenthesis, and then put chick weight inside. And so I'm asking it to view this data set. And now up above, I'm going to get my chick weight data set showing like a spreadsheet. And I can scroll down and look at it. It always keeps the names if they're given to you up there. So another way that you can look at your data set is to type view, and it'll show up up here. But what happens if I typed my command in incorrectly?
it gives me an error. First of all, it tells me it can't find the function view. So I know that this, as I typed it in, is not a correct thing to communicate to our studio. I'll have another video talking a little bit more about how to troubleshoot errors in our studio. Now, another thing that's really nice about our studio is that most data sets also have some information about them. And you can see that information by using the help command. So you'll type in help in the parentheses and then the name of your data set. And it shows up again. I've typed things correctly. Now you notice something happened over here. The help option or option in this pane has popped up and it says chick weight is a data set. And what does it tell us? The weight versus age of chicks on different diets. It gives us a description. It tells us how to use it, right? If you type this in, you get to look at it. It tells us its format, which you probably don't have to worry about that much. And it contains the following columns, weight, a numeric means number, telling the body weight of the chick in grams. The time is also a vector, giving the number of days since birth when the measurement was made. So all of these columns here are the variables that have been measured on the chicks. So the individuals are chicks, the sample is made up of chicks, and these are the variables that were measured on them. The details generally gives you some idea about how or why or where the data set came from. So in this case, we have a situation where they were doing an experiment with chicks to see what their body weight was on different protein diets. And then they should always also have a source for where that data came from. And then there might be some example commands to use with that data set. So what have we just talked about? We've talked a little bit about some things we can do in the console to look at our data sets. Data, open, close parentheses. You never put anything in there. Gives you a list of the data sets available in our studio. View, parentheses, the name of the data set, close parentheses. The data set appears as a spreadsheet in the top left pane. Right, so this generic means any data set, but you have to use the exact name of the data set. The same for help. Help of da on data set gives you information on the data set in the help pane. You've seen how you can get some data in and play around with it using commands in this console. The histogram command is also one we'll be playing with, and there'll be another video on that. But if I wanted to do histogram, I can only use one of the variables. So I'll start out by naming the data set, then putting a dollar sign, and then I have the, these choices of variables. So I'm going to do weight. If you hit enter there, a histogram of that variable will show up over here. So typing, to go back over some of the things we did, typing view here gave us a picture of, sorry, a spreadsheet view of the data up in this pane. Typing histogram and help gave us a plots and help information over here in this pane. So working in the console, you immediately get back something either here or here, unless you're assigning something. And we'll go over that sometime in the future. But right now, we're only going to work with things that give you immediate feedback when you're working in the console. So to cover, go over once again what we covered in this video, We talked about how you start your first project, the different panes, viewing, environments, console, files, and plots, and how to look at the data sets using commands in the console. The next video will talk to you about getting data in and out of our studio.